welcome along to the Invincible Podcast with my man Lee Judges and also Julian. We are still over here at the time of recording this show in Porto in Portugal where you know what, we've had a great trip. We were there for a couple of days, really, really enjoyed it apart from the game, the performance in the game. Um, we're going to get stuck into that and look forward to Newcastle at the weekend. Um, Arsenal losing to Porto. Uh, 1-0 in the end, a last, I wouldn't even say last minute, last seconds of the game, um, an absolute worldie scored by one of their players who actually had missed his absolute sitter earlier on in the game, um, and Porto running out 1-0 winners. Um, want to get your, you know what Lee, I'm not going to start with your reaction. Well actually no, I'm going to go to both of you because I've been warning both of you throughout this week, in particularly you, that this was going to be a tough game. I said to you about the experience of Porto. They're an experienced Champions League team that are in it year in, year out. And that showed in the game. You, it, they showed their experience. They didn't come to attack Arsenal. They set up in a low block. They were really, really well organised. Soon as Arsenal got into their half, snapping out of their heels, they nullified Martinelli, they nullified Saka, they nullified all of our threats. We had to, you know, rely on lots of set pieces. They were very, very smart from those as well. You know what I mean? Every time they felt a little touch, what they went over, they worked the ref who was pretty weak on the night and kept it tight at nil-nil. And then that one moment of magic that was required, they're the ones that produced it and they deservedly won the game. And you describing them as a team like Burnley was very disrespectful. I spoke to a couple of uh, Porto fans last night who actually referred to that. One of them said to me that you was calling them, um, you know, comparing Porto to Burnley, which they couldn't believe. And the other one said to me that you said that if Porto was in the Premier League, they'd be some sort of mid-table team, which again, they found very offensive. They showed us last night that they are a proper Champions League team and... Our inexperience kind of shone through in that game, Lee. Yeah, look, listen, I don't, I didn't think that they was a great side. I'm going to be really honest with you. Like, no, they weren't you know, a great they were, side. They were well organised. I do take on the on the on the thing that what you were saying, and I agree with you that they're different to Burnley because of that, that experience they've got in Champions League and everything like that. But I still stand by it. If they was in the Premier League, I wasn't that impressed with them last night. To be honest, I felt that we was. Um, caught between whether we actually go for the game or not. I, I felt we was inexperienced ourselves on the game, mm. on the day, if I'll be really honest. But, um, I, I, and the one thing that I actually did say to Julian, um, one thing that they had a player that can do something like that, a little bit of magic out of, out of nowhere, Burnley haven't got that. that. Those sort of teams haven't got that. They have. They've got some, you know, class players. But come on, you know what I mean? Pepe at 40 years of age, like, bossing the, the back. I think that's more on us than them. I really do. I, I, I've... I've slept on it. I'm more and more disappointed about the way we went about it yesterday. Very disappointing. Um, the way we, we set up. Uh, I've just been doing the Forever Arsenal. You know, with not learn, with not learning our lessons, not just from the Champions League, but from the Europa League of the last couple of seasons, where our form going into away games in Europe is not good enough for, for and we're not learning. That you know, very very similar this game to Lons. And I hope that it's a sim similar outcome when we go back <laughs> to them at home, you know. But I didn't think we performed well enough in that game. I certainly didn't against PSV. And now we're into this game here. The one game we did play really well was Seville when we got the result. But I, 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 I think tactically, I'm going to give it to them. I thought that they'd done us with their tactics and all that. But basically, both teams went into that game. And they're the home side, don't forget, without a, a forward. You know, it was, they looked to nullify us and we didn't really know what to do. Credit to them, I've got to say that. They've, they've got the result, they've got the win, but I still think there was a lot of flaws from our do, performance do, do, you, do you think it's um, like Arsenal, like you said, I agree with you, they didn't know if to stick or twist at yeah. times. They didn't really go for it, did they? It's, it's almost like, a, you know, they were looking at it and saying, well, we get a draw go back to our place, that's still a decent result because at our place, all we need to then do is win the game and we'll, we'll go through and our record at home is great. Porto don't have a great record travelling. So let's just, you know, do you think that the fact that there's no, that away, away goal rule no longer exists? Remember, 
teams would have to use to come and hunt for that away goal yeah. because it's all important. Because if you didn't get that and then you lose 1-0, then you know that if that team comes and they score at your place, <laughs> then you've got to score three. Arsenal didn't really go for it, in my opinion. Uh, do you know what? And that's the, the massive thing that's changed since the last time we was in the Champions League mm. to this time. It's, the mass, it's a massive thing. Because I think if there was the away goal rule today, I think Arsenal would have said, right, let's get that away goal. Let's go flip forward and go for it. I felt to yesterday, Arsenal didn't know what was a good result. I know that sounds silly, but I yeah. don't know. They didn't know what was a good result. Like, oh, nil-nil is a good result. But if we go for it, and we end up getting caught on the break and losing 2 0, it's a bad thing. So we was caught, we was caught from that point of view. I think if there was an away goal rule in it, we would have gone, right, let's go out, get that away goal. Now what's transformed and we've lost one hill, thank God there isn't an away goal yeah, right yeah. now because we'd be in a lot more trouble than what I think that we will be. I, I honestly think if it was an away goal rule, we'd be right up against it. Yeah. But I, I, I do think we've got enough to um I think if we if we hit him early, I think we've got enough. The end the end of it is I, people might have a meltdown. I'm certainly not having a meltdown at this moment in time because it's half time. You know, what I mean, that's how I look at it. It's not about yesterday. It's about over the both games, and, and mm. at the end of it, we're still in it. Um, but but it wasn't a great performance. Burnley, you described them as no better than Burnley you described Porto as, right? After <laughs> watching the game yesterday, would you still stick to that? Yes. Yes. Are you so being I, serious? Yeah, I, I am. I agree. No, no, what, hold it, no, hold no, it. No, hold you on. asked me if I'm being serious and I'm going to tell you, tell you the reasons why. I mean, Lee said something that they would be a mid-table Premier League team. And I think that's absolutely right. Yeah, Burnley so, are not a mid-table Premier League team. They're, not, they're at the bottom. Yeah, but when Burnley were under Sean Dyche, they were... They're not under Sean Lower to mid-table. And the way... And it was very interesting what you said about their tactics, that you described them as smart. For me, it's not smart to cheat. And you're talking about... <laughs> it, it, was a, it was one of the contributing factors, and you're quite right. One thing you said about the referee was he was weak. Now, UEFA have changed the rules about the away goals, and the reason they've done that, whether it's correct or not, was to make the game more interesting, to make the game more entertaining, because ultimately, that's what the football authorities want to do. Mm -hmm. And all, a lot of these rule changes are designed to make the games more free-flowing, more entertaining, more of a product that people want to see, the neutrals want to see. And that game last night, one thing I think we'll all agree on, was that it was a boring game. Okay, mm. it had a, um, a climax at the end, which unfortunately for us wasn't what we were looking for. <clears throat> but the rest of the, the game was boring. And the reason for that was that this smart tactics, as you describe, was in effect every time a Porto player was near an Arsenal player, they'd literally just throw themselves to the ground. Now, there's it been. Works. It worked, but it shouldn't work. But for me, that's not smart. That's, it is. That, that's cheating, and that's also a reflection of the referee. Now, you called him weak, and one of the other criticisms people have um, said about referees is that they've never played the game before. The way that referee refereed that game, I don't think he's even watched a game before because it was so obvious to anyone that watches football, you didn't have to play football at any type of level to understand that the Porto players were just throwing themselves on the ground. No, but listen, hold on. And that right. ruined the game, and it's cheating Who deserved to win the game? None of them. Neither, neither team. No, they deserve to win the game. No, I don't think they because, did. We because at the, the, it's, it's, their tactics was, right, what we're going to do, we're just going to stifle Arsenal. We're going to stifle them. We're not going to give them no space, no... And then we'll try and catch them on a the counter-attack. And we will use a little dark arts and that. If we can get away with it, we get away with it. But that's not right. And you know what? If we get a moment, we take it. And those tactics worked. Our tactics didn't work. We likely said, we didn't even know what we were doing after the time. Are we attacking? Are we defending? What are we doing? We had loads of possession, but we didn't do anything with it. Was it was meaningless possession. Right? And you cannot describe the team that we saw last night. You cannot compare them with Burnley. They're a million miles better than Burnley. They were, t they were tactically astute, right? Yes, you're right. It was a boring game. Yes, they're not a... You know, I wouldn't say they're one of top-tier teams, 
but they are what they showed yesterday is the experience yeah. that they have in Europe. And when you were there during the day saying, Oh, who did they play? Some team called a kosher. And he got, and he got that wrong. Some and he got, he got that, that wrong, wrong as well. well yeah. Yeah, some but, team uh, called this and some team called that in yeah. disrespect to them. It was, it was real the guys that I met here in Porto, they watched that interview and they were saying, almost like to say, you're disrespecting Porto. It was, it you're going to find out. And I told you, we stood outside the stadium the day before. I said, look at this place. It's a big stadium. It's yeah. going to be packed. The atmosphere is going to be good. They're going to be up for it. And that guy from Porto said, he goes, ignore what you see in the league. Anytime they play against a big team, yeah, especially right. at home, they step it up. They... I think they lost 1-0 to Barcelona here. Yeah? Probably had the exact same tactics, but Barcelona just got a goal. This is what you're going to come up against in Europe. Just don't disrespect these teams. Yeah, but I don't just make these opinions up. What I do is I research the form, I look at the injuries, I look at lots of different well, factors. Work it out and get it wrong. No, but, <laughs> yeah, but, but, I, but I, don't always, I don't always get it wrong. And you highlight when I get it wrong. And the majority of the time, I, I get it right. I mean, last week... You both said Chelsea do not have a chance against Man City. You just completely dismissed it as if it's a if it's a fourth division team playing against some Premier League division team, and you just dismissed Chelsea out of hand. And all I said, and I didn't say Chelsea would definitely win. I said that the Chelsea team has a chance to go to Manchester City and get a result. And I was right, right. and you were wrong. So you were you, you were given a chance to a mid-table team in England, in Chelsea. Right, but you're giving Porto no chance against Arsenal. They're third in their league because Chelsea, with the resources that they have, and the players that they're not being important the right now. Got, for, for me, when you put it on paper, and I know it's played differently, Chelsea are a better team than Porto. So you still think that? The, all right, forget Chelsea for a minute. You still well, compare? It's convenient to forget Chelsea. It's no, no, we, right. we, 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 you know they have spent a lot of money, Chelsea. But forget. Yeah, Chelsea. he has a point there. Though, forget though. Chelsea. We from, did dismiss Chelsea. Yeah, yeah, we. I didn't think Chelsea would. Um, and, no, you know, it was the case. Let's, I didn't let, think. Let, let's, you said there was no chance. The Harlem takes no his chances. Chance. Let's be real. Harlem yeah, yeah, takes his chances right. on the yeah, day. You said that had been three or four minutes. You said there was no chance. Yeah, yeah. So why just, are you going to admit you're yeah, wrong? Yeah, right. I'll admit I was wrong on that. But are you going to admit you're wrong to compare Porto to Burnley? I'm not going to admit that I was wrong to make that comparison because I did it. And I backed it up with the reasons why I, no, I wrong. said but that. You've got to hold your hand up. But I hold my hands up, and that something I, that I still can't get my head round is that how a team that can be so poor, in a, and this isn't a disrespect, this is a fact of the Portuguese league, a seventh tier European league, a team that can be so poor in that can be, as you say, tactically so astute, they smart. Uh, in, in one sense, I will give them credit. The way they played Arsenal was the only way that they could get a result against Arsenal. And they did, and, which they, was, and they achieved which, which, that. Which was using two factors. Number one, I would call it negative tactics, because it's a lot easier to just... They had um, the better to, chances to, to as well, defend, Jimmy, they, right? they, they had two chances. Mm. How many did we have? We had zero chances. We had no and, shots on and target. There, and there's two reasons. Well, there's probably a number Julie, of reasons. Julie, hold on. That if somebody, right, if I'm sat in the dressing room, right, and I'm, I come up with tactics for the game and I say, right, our, our job, and all you guys defending the whole team, our job today is to go out there and nullify Arsenal, right, and try and see if we can... You would get a draw or we get a 1-0 win or go back to their place and we try the thing. And then I look at the game at the end when I've sat down the next day and I'm making an assessment of the game and I see that Arsenal have had no shots on target. Do you think my tactics have been right? To win the game... Yes, it, 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 huh? it was correct. If, if winning is the only thing, They've got this the only factor. Spot on. No, you've got to, you got the end. The end of it. You have to look at it and say, right, this is this is where you you fall down a little bit. Like if Porto are going to go right, let's go and play ours. Let's go gun ho against them. They're going to get stuck. I don't stunned. expect to go gun right. gun ho. So what they've done, I, I, I they've, don't they've looked cheat. at it. They, they've looked at it. They haven't cheated yesterday. The, the, the they've ref not cheated they did. Like yesterday. Throwing themselves no, on no, the ground. No, no, no. Listen, the referee allowed it. Football 
for years, Julian, like, you know, you've been going to European games, you it's know that. It's called. the way that it is. Whether it's right or wrong, it's the way it is. What I look at that game yesterday, and what is the big worry for me is that other teams will now look at that and go, right, that's how to beat Arsenal. That is how to beat Arsenal. That's how West Ham did. That's how West Ham done it. Not really what West Ham did. In the first we game. Had, well, we had like 20 odd shots on target against them. We didn't get anything yesterday. And the reason I think, because these teams uh, look at it and they're, and this is why you have to admire Porto. And when I say they're a mid-table team, because at the end of the day, they could not play like that every single game because their fans wouldn't tolerate that. You know, but when they're playing against a big team, it is easier to defend than attack. Let's, let's be honest, it's easier to coach defending more than attacking. It, 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 that, that is true. And what they've done was they stifled us and defended. And you have to give them credit for that. I give them credit for the way they, they stifled us yesterday. I look at that and I think at the end of the day, they're going to play that same tactic at the Emirates. Yep. But the difference being now, difference. Arsenal will know exactly what they've got to yep. do where they didn't know what they had to do yesterday. And I think that was the, 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 the fundamental point of it, of it all. Yeah. We now know what we've got to do in that game. And, I, and that's why I, give, I, I, I still think Arsenal will go through because I think in that second leg now, we know what to do. And <laughs> thank God for this, not the away goal thing, yeah. because then we'd be on ten hooks. Like if they did, if we do slip up and they get a goal, but I, 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 I'm still confident. Porto don't travel well as well. I'm confident we'll go through, but we still can't take them lightly, even the sec in, even in the second leg. There was a big debate going on about the goal. Um, lots of mistakes involved in the goal. Declan Rice um, should have done better. Martin Ellie really should have done better. The goalkeeper, there's been a big debate going on on whether he should have saved that goal, David Raya, or not. Lee, I know you're in the camp of he should have saved it. Yeah, l listen, I've, I've not really um, seen the goal too much. I've only seen it on phones at this moment in time. But what I will say, look, listen, if you're beaten from 30 yards and it's in the top corner, smashed in on that, I can accept it. But when you look at that goal, it's, it's not in the corner. It's halfway down the goal. I, I think his positioning is... Uh, could have been better. Now, in his defence, and I will say this, we lose the ball where we shouldn't lose the ball, so maybe he's not set the way he should have been. But I'm looking at that, and I'm, I've, I've watched it three or four times. I'm not going to say, oh, it's his fault and all that. I'm saying, looking at it, I think, I feel that he should have saved it. All right, so on the positioning side of it, I mean, I've watched it on the phone as well, probably as many times as you have and it's still the same goal on the phone. Our eyes might not be the best, but we can still see it. Now, he was four yards off his line. So where should he be then? Well, I, I, I think that he was maybe too, too near to his near post. You know what I mean? Like, it's not gone in the top corner. That's my, that's my argument about it. It's like... But the other thing, it was obscured. The way Declan Rice... I mean, Declan Rice yeah, that, that, was at fault. He, he backed off, he backed off, he backed off. And then what he did, he turned. He turned his body. And the play is very clever. I mean, one thing I will give... I'll give cre credit on a few things to Porto. One of them was the goal and the finish was exceptional. But he used Declan Rice as the obstruction, yeah. as, as the barrier. Oh. So you, you're right, he wasn't set, but there was a reason for that because Declan Rice isn't transparent. He's, no, he's but actually, I, I, he's listen, I've seen and David it, it, Seaman it, 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 not do nothing. I remember a game against Sunderland once, like, and then, you know, wow, it's an unbelievable save. World-class goalkeepers sometimes pull out those wonder saves. And I've seen it like... I, and and I, I'm I'm saying I'm not I'm not I, I know it's a little bit of criticism, but I'm not criticism because I think he's done well in the last few games. But world class goalkeepers, I think, save that. Yeah, there is a way to save that, and I look, I know it's going to sound a bit silly, but I know how you can save that ball, That's and it, it's risk reward because. What he's done, he's waited to see where the shot's going and he couldn't get there. Now, the other way to save that ball is to predict where the ball's going before and you're starting the dive before he actually takes the shot. Now, the risk in that is that you get it wrong and then you get to look very stupid because it goes the other way. Yeah, like, listen, when, I, when, when the shot went in, do you know what? Uh, how, how I gauge it, and uh, you know, look, listen, I've never played in goal, so that's why it's, it's very, very difficult to criticise goalkeepers, in my opinion. But when it, when it shot, there was a shock around me, like that it had gone in. Oh, yeah, I was and shocked. It, like, and that, that, that tells me something, like, you know what I mean? Like, so listen, it's got to do you know, with the, being the 92nd minute. Yeah, uh, we, we like, were, no one was expecting I, I, it. Listen, I, I've seen shots go in, and you go, right, 30 only 40, you're out. 
I just felt we could have done better. That's my opinion. I'm not going to change from that. I, 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 at the end of the day, I'm not saying it's you know that he's at fault or whatever. But then if he's I, not at fault, then well, but, he no, hasn't. Um, I'm not know, saying that. I'm just saying I just I, I, I think that he should have saved it. That doesn't mean well, then to say it means he's, he's at, at fault. fault. Not so, really. So, so, yeah, <laughs> not he can't. Really. If he should have saved it. He's at fault. So if he's at fault, what could he have done differently? Well, like, you know, like, you could turn around and say, like, on a, on a penalty, you should save it, but it's not his fault, you know, because every time you expect to score from a penalty. I, I, I don't, you know, it's not like he's, it's not a howler, is it? He's not throwing it in or whatever, like, you know. Yeah, but then it must be a fault. I mean, okay, Every goal is a fault, so, Julian, so, so, like, you no, know what I mean? Not, you're, you're just no, looking no, to argue goalkeeper. like you always do, trying to think if, on, if you on look that, at, like, you look you know? at Don't even hold your hands up that you got it wrong about Burnley, like, you know what I mean? Perhaps if Ray have held his hands up like you should against Burnley, we might have saved it. I don't know, what like, you know? against Burnley? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, on the penalty, P1, I mean, Trafford on Saturday should have saved that penalty it wasn't a good penalty that was a goalkeeper yeah, mistake well not so, really but yes you, it was you, it was a mistake because he should have you, saved it you, you, you. But then it's on another part of it. You turn around and go, "Well, it's a penalty. You shouldn't like." No, it was. It wasn't a good penalty. penalty. Trafford should have saved that penalty. That was a mistake. Now tell me why Raya should have saved that penalty. What he could have done but, differently. Uh, but but I, I, I've, I've, I've said to you, his positioning could have been a little bit better. But I, I think but if I his said position four, is a little better. He goes with his wrong arm. He four yards Does he not out. go with his wrong arm? No, he was four yards out. For me, he's in the right position. So where should he have been positioned then? Oh uh, well, I, I think as I said again, like you know, what I mean, maybe one yard um, further back. Uh, as I say, I'm not an expert on a goalkeeper. Someone will have to well, come on and say that. And also, well, if he I'm was saying. another, an another, expert, another you, yard, you're an goal. expert nothing in football <laughs> when it comes to football. <laughs> I've played in goal. You've played you like, like, you know, what, 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 five a side, like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> oh, you must get chipped more than, a, oh, I don't know what. But I, I, I just think like positioning, well, I, listen, if it goes top corner, in the top corner, like postage stamp, I'm going to go, yeah, there's nothing you can do about it. But it, it doesn't. Have a look where it finishes in the goal. It's halfway I've, down I've the had a look. I've looked at it on my phone. And you don't, me, me and you not, don't agree on it, like, you know what I mean? It's no, just no I'm, I'm not. I, I could be convinced if you could tell me what he did should have done differently. Save it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, well, listen, I, 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 <laughs> for both of you, right? You There's a lot of people now. Be, be honest. There's a lot of people. There's Listen, a lot of people. I, I was half an hour. It's yeah, I, I did, I did, a, I did an split. interview this morning on Talk Sport with uh, Alan Brazil. Yeah, we heard uh, it. Alan Brazil and Gary. Yeah, we heard it. This yeah. 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 We didn't hear it right now. They did ask me to come on quite early. But both him and Gary. Good morning. But both him and Gabby Abonios, they both thought he sh um, Rea should have saved Professional Professionals as well. Yeah, yeah. But I personally think it was a worldie. And it's just one of them things. But listen, um, do you both feel confident that we'll turn it around in the second leg? Uh, yeah, I, I, I do. I'm going to be really honest because I think that on two, two reasons. We're at the Emirates. I think that's one big thing. And also, I do think, Robbie, I, 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 you know, we now know what we've got to do. I, I do feel there was a little bit of an experience in the team yesterday, which is wrong, by the way, because I've tried to stick up for Mick is but as, as Turkish said earlier on today uh, on the Forever Arsenal, he's had three years of Euro or two years of Euro Europa League football to learn. You know what I mean? Like, and we're still making the same mistakes going into the Champions League, um, of not really knowing how to, to, to do it and whatever. Like. But I do think yesterday, I think the players have got to take a lot of responsibility yeah. yesterday. I felt that there was... You see them a nil-nil, it's a decent result. There, there was some poor play from touches... You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, people rolling the ball and it going under their feet and passes. You know, Jorginho, I think, has been fantastic when he's come on the last set. He come on his first two passes, he knocked out. I think it was just a little bit of that yesterday. Yeah. But for, for me, I think we know exactly what we've got to do at the Emirates, and I think from that point of view, mm. that I, I, I'll be there. I'll be disappointed if we're not we're yeah. not level after twenty minutes. Turn it around. I think it was a perfect storm last night in in their favour. Everything that could have gone wrong did go wrong. Um, I still think we're favourites to go through, but an early goal is absolutely crucial. The longer it goes on at nil nil, yeah, that's a great point. There, it's it's going to be like every other Premier League, well, most Premier League games at Arsenal is the team's going to come and defend for their lives, restrict restrict space, and we're going to have to be very clever. But the other thing is, hopefully, in three weeks' time, we're going to get back some players. The other thing I thought was that we didn't have the options off the bench that we've had previously. Yeah. 
But well, we haven't had that in the last two games, yeah. Julian. But we didn't did we? need it. Yeah. And we said that. I said but, that at West Ham that we needed. But funny it. enough, right? I looked at that game last night, and I was sort of saying again. I was asked that question this morning by the guys on Talksport, and I was saying that, well, you know, <laughs> ten minutes ago it's nil nil. You don't need to win the game. You just need to see it out. So you don't really need to. If you're bringing on substitutions, those substitutions of a Jorginho or more defensive mind is not bad because no. nil-nil back at our place, it's a good result. It's just that we messed up in the end. Um, does that do anything for our confidence going into a big game at the weekend against Newcastle? Um, we're looking at the table now and all of a sudden, you know, a little bit of a gap's appeared again because Liverpool got to play last night and they beat Luton 4-1. Um, Man City played their game in hand. They've gone above us. We have to win that game against Newcastle at home. And that's a game that last season <laughs> kind of mirrored this one in a bit, apart from we didn't lose, mm. in that Newcastle put everybody behind the ball. We couldn't break them down. And it ended up nil-nil. This is a huge game at the weekend for Arsenal. Do you think this is going to knock the confidence a bit? Because you know, we've been absolutely flying since uh, you know, the start of the year. Or do you look at it and say, totally different game, the players will be pumped to do well in that game against Newcastle. Yeah, yeah, uh, listen, has, has my confidence been knocked because of last night? No. As a fan, my confidence has not been knocked because it's a completely different game, completely different competition. So, uh, and and, it, and it is, this game here is not about yesterday, by the way. It's about mm. the, over the two legs. And if you get through, like, if we, if we win 3-0, say, against um, Porto, no one will talk about this game. Like, But mm. if you lose to... Uh, Fulham or you lose to uh, Newcastle on Saturday you do talk about that game like you know listen I've got no doubts that Newcastle will come and, and, and do what they what they done last season try and stifle us we owe them we owe them one big time and hopefully like you know if Mikel's got any any sense and all that like you know we've played a video of all the little misdemeanours of what Newcastle done in that game just to remind them what, what it would be because I certainly would be and then go out there and, 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 and do the business we need. I, I think um, we need an early goal against them, and um, but I, I don't think that. Any, I'll be shocked if if, we, if we're talking Saturday night, going oh that that game on Wednesday affected us. I'll be shocked. Newcastle at home. Yeah, did, we, we we didn't beat them last year. As a matter of fact, we didn't beat them at their place either um, this year. So that's you know we we face a tough game on Saturday and we know now in the Premier League all of these games are must win games especially when you're playing at home started the year brilliantly in the Premier League but you're a little bit worried after last night we know Newcastle will probably come and do the same thing yeah, sure. yeah. no I, I'm, I'm definitely worried but you mentioned that would our confidence be knocked now if our confidence is knocked after five straight wins with the goals that we scored and the lack of goals we conceded after one freak result then we don't deserve to be in the Premier League hunt anyway. What I'm more concerned about, in fact, I'm concerned about two things. Number one, the turnaround between now having to travel back. They're probably not going to be able to train today. They've got one day of training to set up for this, this game, whereas Newcastle have had the whole week to prepare. The other thing that is in our favour, in one sense, is that Newcastle, again, have got massive injury problems up front. So... What that's going to mean is that if you're in any doubt of how they're going to play, that doubt has completely been dismissed because they are going to come. They're going to set up in exactly the same way as we saw last night. So in one way, we've had a bit of a we've had a bit of a practice at that. So if we fail again to break them down, then we've got issues. Yeah, like, listen. I think like um, this is. I think Mikel's biggest problem is trying to solve how to break this low block down. I, I've not been impressed with us on, on many occasions this season. Again, failed yesterday a lot because of it. But Broke I've, it down against West Ham. Broke, broke it, it down broke against it down uh, Burnley. Down. It took half hour. Broke to, it down against it took, half Forest. Hour, it, it took half hour against Broke them. it down against uh, Crystal Palace. Y yeah. Just a few of the low block teams that we played. Um, yeah, and, 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 and when you look at those teams, um, West Ham, like, you know, it was a little bit of a freak result like, for, after 30 minutes, but I'd expect us to beat... Um, Crystal Palace and, and Burnley. Low block teams. Low, lower block, lower down there. No, but you're concerned but, about it breaking down low blocks. Right? Yeah. Oh, we didn't do it last night. No, That's quite a few we've broken yeah, down. Yeah, but, but with, with the, the low block teams that I do concern a little bit more are the ones with a little bit more quality. 
and like you know, last night have a little bit more quality, and certainly Newcastle have got a little bit more quality to hurt us on the break and all that. Like, I, I think the one thing that I think that we are a little bit tentative, we're a little bit worried about teams maybe getting us on the break and all that. Like, we just got to go in there and be positive, be positive. I, I and also you can go on about the low block <coughs> if the likes of Saka, Trossard, and Martinelli turn up. You know, I said to Julian yesterday, I said, like, even at nil-nil, I said, one of them ain't done, none of them done anything yet. One of them will in a minute. And they didn't. We've, we've got players in the team that can hurt, hurt, hurt teams. Mm. And, and, and sometimes you, against a low block, you need a little bit of magic, a little bit of class. And if you don't have that, you have the little set pieces and everything like that. So, listen, I, I don't think it'd be an easy game. I don't think it will be. But we have broken down um, low block teams in the last couple of games. West Ham particular was a was a very very good one you know like, but it took us 30 minutes Rob and then we blew them away so we might have to be a little bit patient yeah and, and the other thing is that we're we're not going to be having the same sort of level of refereeing I mean th that guy gave 36 fouls in a um, in a game of football which was by far and away the biggest amount of fouls in Champions League um, season it, it was yeah, outrageous I mean, so it, it if, if the referee allows the game to flow a little bit then we've got a, we've got far more of a chance. Um, would you make any changes to the it, team? It depends what the injury situation is. Say the injury um, situation is the same as it is now. Would you maybe try and refresh? Maybe bring Eddie and Ketter in for the start, or would you? You know, because like you said, they just had a game Wednesday night. Purely based on that, I would bring Eddie in. What about you? You would bring Eddie in. I'd, I'd bring Eddie in. For I, I don't think he's as good as the, the other the other players, but he is fresh and hopefully he's going to prove himself. Would you? Does he trust Eddie? Well, not after last night, no. You I got so. he, he was also going, I think by the end, the fact he brought on Jorginho, he was happy with the draw. You bring on Eddie yeah. to, to, to win the game. I, and I and you were that. quite right in that he was caught a little bit and towards the end it's like nil nil's fine. So we're not going to bring Eddie on. Yeah, I, I get that. I, 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 I felt like you know, even the manager didn't know what was what what was a good result and a bad. Like, listen, nil nil. We'd have all walked away from that game. Yeah, forget about that. It's it's the right thing. Like you know, for me, I wouldn't make changes on on Saturday now. Like you mm -hmm. know, um, I, I would keep it the same. We haven't got a game until um, the following weekend. Um, when so it's on a Monday yeah, night, so they night. can have a good rest up after this. So yeah. I, if it was me, I'd be saying, look, have a good rest today. Uh, I don't know if they travelled on last night or this morning. I think someone mm. said they might be going this morning. So, but either, either way, they're not training. Either today, way, they're they? not training. It's just a rest day, a little bit of a light one uh, tomorrow. And and maybe, I don't know, what, what they could even actually do something at the Emirates in the, in, the, in the morning, Saturday morning before the game. I don't know just to work on a few things. But what I would say is like rest up and then give it everything you've got um, in that game. I think the last 20 minutes could be crucial if we're mm -hmm. not, if we've not broken down and whatever. And then we've got to rest after that, like, you know. But listen, the, these players are, are, can, can handle three games in a week. Yeah, and I mean, well, listen... It didn't we, look like it yesterday. Yeah, they were a bit flat. Frat, excuse me. I don't think that was fatigue or anything like that. I think yeah, it was nor just do I. the tactics. I think. Yeah, they just got stifled. And and also, I think what you got to remember is we talk about it's not not like they've had a lack of training. They've been training for that game last night, so they have been training all week, and they will get a training session in on Friday. So I I, I still think you know all right, they may not be. And, and maybe, maybe that's why the likes of party. It, it didn't travel because you get more training over there, more benefits of, yeah. tra of staying there. My biggest concern there is what, where is Jesus? Where, 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 where Where's Tommy Asu? Where's Tommy Asu? Where's Tommy Asu? Where's mentioned? You know, I, mean, I, I don't like the silence around it as well. The, the, the Jesus one, we've not really had an update on uh, where he's at with his injury. Zinchenko. I mean, it was, what, Zinchenko. Yeah. You know, these are vital players. We need, Tommy them. Asu. We need them. Tommy Asu is a player that last night's game would have been, you know, th that's the type of player you need. No, I think we miss Zinchenko more because we need to open them up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, both of those players. If you know all what of mean? them Let's are available. Real. If those two are, two, two are fit, Kivio's not even in, even playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah but who would you have played out of those two? For me, it would have been Zinchenko rather than Tommy Asu. I was probably have gone with Tommy Yasu but the way the game panned out I probably would have brought Zinchenko on because you know we had so much possession but um, at the end of the day and Jesus yeah. would have been per I mean Jesus yeah. has been our most un um, informed player in the Champions League yeah. but you see, I'm getting frustrated now the fact that 
He's out. We don't know what's happening. Tommy Asu's come back from the Asia Cup. As I said yesterday, everybody, yeah. everybody, yeah. Else everybody's is back. Everybody's Son, playing. Uh, Wang, um, uh, Wolves, everybody's back, right? Apart from Tommy Asu. What's wrong with him? It's, it's, you know, it's apparently, getting annoying. he's got a knock, whatever that means. And in the end of it, if, if Tommy Asu, Shinchenko, Jesus are in that squad yesterday, we do not lose that game. Yeah. Because yeah. The, man, the, the manager goes, right, we go. I do think because of the lack of depth in that squad I mean, there was a lot of no, they, 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 they have they have depth they've just got a lot of injuries to some key but listen, players listen Joey I'm going to be really yeah. honest with you I, what, what, and you can say you can read your, your little notebooks and all your facts and everything <laughs> like that right <laughs> I see that warm up yesterday that they were doing at the end of the game there there's four players I didn't recognise didn't even know who they were and that's a f- last 16 of a Champions League game and we've got kids that are not even going to just making up the, the numbers I'm not criticising, but what, that making you didn't, up. You didn't recognise James Sweet? No, did you? <laughs> yes. Oh, right, yeah. I've done my research. Oh, I've done your research. What number is he then? 54. That's a guess. <laughs> 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 All right, guys, give me a prediction for Saturday. Newcastle at home. I think we'll beat them 2 0. I've I'll, I'll said the same 2 0. I think it'd be a tough game, but 2 0, yeah. 2 0. 2 1, bro. 3 1. Ooh. Three one answer. I think we're going to bounce back, man. I think we have to bounce back. I think we're going to be. I think their pride's a bit hurt after that game. You know, what I mean, no shots on target. It's, that's the one. You know, what I mean, yeah. they're going to be looking at it and thinking, no, 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 can't let it happen again. And I do think well, the one thing Julian said, which is true, right? Um, it's more than one thing. I'm not said. Bla- well, there's probably. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, well, I'm not, I'm not, in a month. Listen, you can't blame Porto because they were very experienced and wily in what they did. I wouldn't put it down as cheating, but they did work a very poor referee. I think in the Premier League, referees will allow a bit more. You know what I mean? So, you know, set pieces, for instance, they, they just literally just fell over every time the ball came yeah. in. And they, you know, so um, those weapons will be back in effect for Arsenal and I'm, I'll, I'll go for 3-1. I think they'll bounce back. But guys... Thank you very much. It's been a really enjoyable trip um, over here to Porto, apart from the result. Very beautiful city, by the way. Isn't yeah, it? and, and look at that. It stopped raining as well. Yeah. Like, yeah. Stopped yeah. raining. We've been thinking we've been back in England looking at at these because today the weather is pretty bad. But we're on our way back to the UK. Um, looking forward to that Newcastle game. Of course, we will be there at the game, all three of us. And of course, we're going to be in the studio. We'll be doing our watch along. We'll be doing the starting 11. We'll be able to find out what that's going to be really interesting. Yeah, that'd be interesting. To see what that 11 is going to be. And we'll be speaking to fans after the game. So thanks for watching the show. Check out all of the great videos from the game um, after Porto. A lot of fans had a a lot to say about that sort of shock defeat. Um, So make sure you check that out. And um, we'll be back next week with another Invincible podcast. Thank you, guys. The Invincible podcast. Myself, Robbie and Lee Judges come together once a week to discuss all things Arsenal. Straight talking, considered discussion, Brought to you by the fans of the only club in football league history to go invincible.